Good morning. Oops, uh, oops. And we are starting our day off really well. Yes, we are. We're slightly lopsided. Okay, let me see if I can make it unlopsided. There we go. Good morning, Jeanette. Good morning, old mucker. Oh dear. Trying to check on something here. Okay. I need to check on make sure somebody's okay. Alright. Alright, now then let me get rid of that. Okay, old mucker. Could it be an, a lymph node, oh mucker? I'm trying to think of the, the simplest solution here. But whatever it is, you need to, it really does need checking out. <sighs> yeah, I know, sweetie. I know. I'm with you. I get you. I'm right there with you. But the thing is, we can't let things, you know, build up. We can't let things get to us like that because it really doesn't do, do us any good. It doesn't do our health any good. It doesn't do our breathing any good. Um... I try and be proactive a little bit more than reactive. I try. I didn't say I always do. I try. Um, sometimes I don't make it. Sometimes I'm not too good at that. Mm. But I know, and yeah, like Jeanette said, you know, we know you don't like doctors, but you can't let something go like that go. I mean, I'm not there, so I can't take a look. I'm sorry. <laughs> mm. Okay. Oh my goodness, oh muck, I could just imagine you going for a scan. I could just imagine, I could just imagine the laughs that you had with those ladies. And you know what, it really helps. Um, it makes their day too, to have somebody that can laugh like that with them. Because they, they put up with so many, you know, cranky not so happy, irritated people. Kind of puts them off. It was all clear back then, okay. Well, hopefully this is something that's, it, it's, it's rock hard and small. Could be a lymph node. Um, I mean, is it possible you got bitten? I mean, it is possible to get bitten in, in certain places. And I know that if you're bitten in sensitive areas, you know, it can be quite quite odd. I mean, it, it doesn't appear like a normal bite. I need to turn that TV off. Where's my remote? There it is.
Exactly. A lump of any size needs to be checked. Oh my gosh, I'm squawking again. <laughs> me, 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 me. Get my voice going. Oh, it's starting to get light outside, which means dawn is starting to break. Yes, it is. Dawn is starting to break. The sun is starting to rise. Just because it's rising doesn't rising doesn't mean to say it's going to shine. Yeah, isn't it funny how you can suddenly come across something like that? You know, it, it's it's something that you don't normally normally check for things and then just suddenly you yeah know, it's it's weird how that happens i don't know it's your body telling you guiding your hand you know something is not right it's very weird how things like that happen it's sunny there but it's still got you know what I, <laughs> the sun actually has started to feel warmer when it comes in through the windows which kind of, which which makes it um, kind of think and feel that it's warmer outside until you open the door and you get hit with this blast of Arctic air. It's like, Ooh. oh, your blood test came back normal last week. Well, that's good. That's good, old mucker. Miss Raina, good morning, honey. <gasps> Lipstick. Good morning, sweetie. It is good to see you. Yes, it is a happy Monday. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Raina. Do you know I slept in yesterday? I mean, I really slept in. It was 10.30 in the morning when I woke up. And I, and I, 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 although I probably needed it, I hate waking up so late in the day I mean I, I I actually at first woke up thinking did I live stream and then I was like oh no I didn't missed it um I I, I don't know what to say I said I slept in I slept in and I always wake up with that that feeling of oh, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. Yes, it does make you feel as though you've missed part of the day. That is so true, Miss Raina. Which in fact you did, because by the time I'm actually get up and mobile and looking to do something, it's like one o'clock. <laughs> Uh, Jeanette's husband had cellulitis for a couple a couple of years ago, and he had he had it before, so he knew the signs. Oh my gosh! Oh, I'm sorry, Jeanette. And he ended up with in the hospital with sepsis. That's terrible. My my friend since high school. She ended up in the hospital too um, with sepsis from cellulitis. You woke up at 2 p.m.? Oh my god, and so did the rest of the family. Oh, that is so cool. That's not too bad. That's a, I mean, that's, that's a good sleeping, is that? When you and the whole family does? Kudos to you. <laughs> and there's nothing with sleeping in, yeah. And making it a PJ's kind of... Oh, sorry. I'm doing it again. I'm doing the yawn thing. You're having a PJ's day there, Miss Raina. Well, good for you. I don't blame you. I might actually today. These are comfy PJ's. Well, they're all comfy PJ's. Yes, that's true, old mucker. We seem to hear a lot about, uh, we seem to 
here and tonsils. <laughs> Sorry. We do seem to hear about sepsis a lot um, lately, and I, I'm, I'm wondering why. So Janet's husband had intravenous antibiotics for about a month. And his leg looked like he'd poured boiling water on it. Oh. Yep. Yeah, my friend since high school, she, her legs were the same and her legs are badly scarred now. Her shins, they're badly, quite badly scarred now. Something must have definitely changed, old mucker. I think... I think there's there's a couple of things. I think that a lot of these bugs that are causing sepsis are becoming super bugs because of the amount of antibiotics that people take on a, a on a too regular basis. Good morning, people, honey. Good morning. Oh, thank you so much, lipstick. You're so sweet. It's funny because yeah, somebody wants to call. I used to that one part. One of my nicknames. One of my many nicknames that I've had in the past. One of them was Spunky. <laughs> one of them, Spunky. Oh, your leg lands you in the hospital once in a while. Do you get sepsis too, um, Miss Raina? Yeah, whoever gets cellulitis, you must have it treated. You really do. I mean, if you have open wounds starting on your on your legs. You really must get it looked at immediately. You know, don't put it off. Don't put it off as though it's one of those things, oh, I can put antibiotic ointment on it. I can, you know, put whatever on it to help. Don't do that. Go to the doctor and get it looked at immediately. Because the sooner you get it done, the sooner it's treated and the better it be. Yep, there I go. It's funky. <laughs> Thank you, Raina. I mean, lipstick. Oh, thank you, Miss Lipstick. Um, you think a bug will? Uh, old Mucker thinks a bug will wipe out humans in the end. That is, is that is possible because one of the theory. Laura, good morning, honey. I was just thinking about you yesterday morning. Oh, honey, I am so sorry. Oh, sweetie, thank you so much, but did you have enough to deal with with your still self. You know, it, it, it's, oh, it's so sweet. Thank you, lipstick. <laughs> I love, I love hugs and kisses. I do, I do, I do. Uh... Yeah, Miss Rainer's. Yeah, yeah, that's true, Miss Rainer. Cancer does make your immune system very short, and her left leg has severe lymphedema from the radiation killing off the lymph nodes. Oh, honey, I am so sorry. I. That is so, I was thinking about you yesterday, Laura. And this morning, actually, when I woke up. Later today, we must connect, Laura. I love you too, Laura, sweetie. I'm I'm sorry. I I should have called you um before now. I well, I should have connected with you before now. And I've just been 
something's not right with my mind. It's um, hello, oh, reader. Good morning. It's good to see you, honey. It's so good to see you. Um. <clears throat> Yes, that is so true. Oh my God, we are destroying the family, the um, the planet, and we need to do something. It's so good to see you this morning, Home oh, oh, Rita. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, it it's it's unfortunate that not enough people are trying to do something to. Yeah, it is all part of the cycle of life, but it sucks. That is so true. <laughs> that is so true, Miss Rayner. And we have to keep our sense of humor. Um, sometimes it doesn't come out, but we still have to keep trying, right? Um, I don't think enough people are, are taking, you know, the, the, the what we do to the planet as human beings seriously enough. Um, I don't think enough people are really doing anything to try and prevent what we're doing or 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 make it better um i don't know if there's a way of making it better oh laura thank you so much honey you have yourself to think about honey you you i mean being being so sick, you, it's, you, you need to put your energy into yourself, sweetie. But we shall talk later today. Your doctor asks you if you're scared of dying. That's an odd thing to ask a patient. And Omaka said he's not scared of the road to dying. Yeah. I guess it's the unknown that we're more fear of. Oh, lemon icebox pie. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh, mm. Well, yeah, Miss Rayner, the, the, the recycling is a little bit, you know, it started on the on the late side and we have destroyed a lot of the planet. But I think if enough people put effort in and if industry looks at a, a non-invasive way of, of dealing with the excess stuff that needs to be recycled, because... Although the recycling, a lot of it is just stockpiling. I mean, it's not, nothing's being done with it. It's just sitting. Mm. Yeah, if life makes you, if, if life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Or as Hall Reader says, a lemon icebox pie. And that sounds real good to me. Mmm, I might send hubby out today to get some lemonade, some lemons. Lemon icebox pie. Um, mm, mm. Ah, old Mucker says that his, his doctor is like his mate. He sees his doctor that much. <laughs> oh, honey, oh, Laura. You're so sweet. Thank you, honey. Yeah, the 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 journey. I don't know what to think about that. Sometimes, sometimes the the, the road to, to to the to, to the dying process. I guess you could say. I think the road just before gets a bit scary, and and the the process. I think what what's scary about it is the unknown. It's not knowing what happens. Yes, styrofoam is 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 um it, 
it is really bad. It is really bad. I mean, I've seen animals die because they've tried to eat styrofoam. Um, it's that there has to be a way of dealing with styrofoam. No, it's not, Miss. It's not. It's not. That's true, Miss Rayner. It's not biodegradable. Um, it can be reduced down if it's um with with um nail polish remover, but then what do you do with the substance that's left behind? Because it's a gooey, sticky mess. Um, somebody needs to come up with something some some way of, of dealing with the styrofoam um i know there's not using styrofoam chips now for um shipping anymore Yeah, asthma and, and COPD can make and and um can make us more aware. I mean, it, it it's one of those that there were the other lung diseases and heart diseases because they both really go hand in hand. Uh, the kind of things that make us very aware. Um, I think breathing. When you have constant restriction with your breathing, um, constant obstruction with your breathing, it really does make you aware of the fact that your next breath might be your last one because especially with asthma, a lot of people don't realize, and, and with COPD, a lot of people don't realize just how dangerous asthma is. Um, my hubby lost a nephew due to an asthma attack. We lost an old friend of ours uh, a few years ago to an asthma attack. And both of them had their hands on their rescue medication and wasn't able to to administer the rescue medication to themselves and they were you know it's um so that's why we have to work on preventative measures yes they do miss Raina. And, 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 and COPD is, um, a lot of people think of COPD as just being, being, um, as, as just being, um, um, emphysema, but that's not true. And COPD is, um, an umbrella for a certain number of, of obstructive diseases, because that's the key. It's a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease so you've got the obstructive so anything that obstructs the breathing falls under the umbrella of COPD so if you have chronic bronchitis COPD if you have asthma that's uncontrolled that restrict that really affects your breathing on a, on a constant basis that falls under the umbrella of COPD you put those two together, that falls under the umbrella of COPD. Um, they've started looking at um, cystic fibrosis as, as listing that under, you know, the COPD. Um, because it really does, cystic fibrosis obstructs the breathing. Um, 
And of course, you know, there's several others, and emphysema is one of them. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're really changing the classification now of, of what COPD is. Well, yeah, that's true. That's true, old mucker. Every illness does is is not pleasant. Let's put it that way. But um, I think when you're not able to breathe, it it is it is, and and, and there's no there's no cure, which kind of leads you to the down the wrong line of thinking. Um, and it's so important to pull yourself out of that line of thinking. Um, yes, Holler Reader, you have got a good point there. All the meat trays, a lot of the meat trays are still um, styrofoam. They need to change that. They really need to change that. I know there is a way to need to change that. Yes, Miss Raina, that is something I'm very aware of. You know, is is the ring, ring tabs. You know, around the the uh, around any if if you have. If you have ring tabs, try and break them and twist them, pull them open. Um, if you have um, those plastic, you know when you have like a dozen or six plastic bottles together, they put use those plastic rings to hold them together. Always cut them open. Always cut them open. Um, because, and then that way, it, it, you know, that's, that's one last thing for an animal to get caught up in. Oh, Miss Rayner, um, I would look at your medications and see how often you take your medications. Um, sometimes they prescribe medications and don't look to see if we're taking two of a similar type. Um... And then try and figure out, um, yes, that is so true, Rita. Chronic pain and depression are bad. I mean, all, all, all um, illnesses are bad. I mean, I, I suffer with chronic pain. Um, Rocky Wolf, good morning to you. And uh, welcome. Oh, my goodness, I'm seeing new faces in here. This is wonderful. Um, yes, yes, Laura, COPD, okay, you have asthma and chronic bronchitis, that there is COPD, doesn't matter whether you smoked, smoke, or never smoked, there are many things. It's not just a smoking disease. This is something that people need to understand and need to learn. That COPD is not, although it's advertised all the time on the TV, there's all these leaflets and pamphlets in the doctor's office that tie it to a smoker's disease. It's not a smoker's disease. I, I ended up like this because I had a ceramic studio and I didn't 
have, I already had chronic bronchitis and asthma. So, under the umbrella of the definition of COPD, I already had COPD, but I wasn't classified for some reason. I was just classified, if I had bro a bronchial attack, it was classic, I had chronic bronchitis. If I had it with my asthma, I was just classified as asthma. Then, when I had my ceramic studio, I thought that by using a face mask, I was protecting myself. Um, anybody with asthma or chronic bronchitis or any other breathing problems really needs to be very careful around clay, and especially clay that dries. Because once clay dries, it's very, very fine powder. And that fine powder can get through a lot of filters. You really need an industrial type of filter, you know, with the respirator type thing. Um, I was working seven days a week, 18 to 20 hours a day. Because it was a new business I was opening up. And I just kept thinking to myself, if I get this finished, I can. If I get this finished, if I get this set up, I can close for a week, take a week off, and then do a grand opening, yada, yada, yada. Clay is very, very fine dust. Clay has a very high concentration of silica in it. That's what makes it change when you fire it and makes it hard it's the silica in the clay if there wasn't the silica in the clay you would just have very dry dirt um, silica um, and clay dust has a little hook on it um, and once it hooks into your mucous membranes, it's down near possible, impossible, it's down near impossible to get rid of all of it. Um, it causes scarring and it, it causes a lot of problems. And within six months of me Working in my studio, I ended up in hospital for a week with respiratory distress. They put it down to asthma. Nobody thought about the ceramic studio. Nobody thought about the clay. All we thought about was I found out afterwards that the the um, that the studio, the shop I was set my studio up in used to be a pet shop and has a lot of mice running around in it and mice are my trigger for my asthma so that's what it was put down to it was put down to uncontrolled asthma so <clears throat> after i come out of hospital i came out of hospital on oxygen with the intention of being weaned off oxygen. All I could think about was my studio is 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 causing money. It's, it's, it's not producing. It's not bringing in money. Money is going out. So I took my oxygen concentrator with me to the studio not thinking and and this just goes to show when you're short of oxygen when your brain's not working right you just don't think right and i i put a mask on i put a face mask on again thinking i was doing the right thing yes i did have ventilation but not enough ventilation and what i didn't occur to me was all the the the, the concentrators have filters on them 
but the clay dust got through those filters was going through the machine and going through my cannula into my lungs. So I was helping the dust more than I had before I got an oxygen. I was helping the dust, you know, go into my lungs. So, and finally, after two years, I called it said, I can't do this anymore. And um, that's the state that you see me in when I was doing the, the early earlier videos of where I'm just cough, 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 cough. What people don't realize is that was 24 hours, seven days a week, that coughing. Um, yeah, no. See, when I was in school, when I was in school, now there are warnings about, yes, yes, Miss Rayner, I closed shop. But again, I still didn't realize that it was the clay dust that was causing this. I closed shop and I brought as much home as possible. You know, we still have molds downstairs in the, in, in the garage. We have molds underneath the deck. Um outside it's covered deck I, I need to get rid of all this stuff jen good morning honey it's so good to see you um so really we have to be careful about you know what we do what we breathe in um i was in hairdressing when i was younger um i'm only short so whenever i did anything with anybody's hair their head was at my head height. And we used to use all those hairsprays. <laughs> so I'm stood there breathing all these hairsprays in. Um, you know, cleaning products. You must, 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 must. You know, don't stand right over. Spray at arm's length if you can. Keep your head turned as far away from the spray as possible. Um, since having these lung problems, I'm really aware of what we breathe in. Breathing in anything now, yeah, is, is so damaging to the lungs. It really is. It really is. We really have to be careful. Do you remember those, I don't know if they're still around now, those spray oven cleaners that used to foam up? <laughs> yeah, I've breathed in a few of those in the past too. And, and let me tell you, they do burn. They, they do burn you in your, um, in your lungs. Anyway, oh good, I am so glad to see everybody is talking to each other, yes, make sure you support each other, go to each other's channels, watch each other's channels, it's so important right now especially for the smaller YouTubers, that we give each other support. Oh, Lorena, I just love that emoji. <laughs> it appeals to my sense of humor. <laughs> um, the other thing, too, that is, is we don't think about... Um, you know, I used to love going camping. I can't tell you how how much of that smoke smoke from the campfire that we've breathed in. So we really have to be careful. <laughs> oh, thank you, Laura. <laughs> 
Yes, Miss Rena, I always wear a mask now. Whenever I go out in public, I wear a mask. Um, I, I have to, I have to. I cannot risk getting sick any more than I, I already am. I mean, I've managed to pull myself around from the constant sickness um, with my lungs, and I, I can't afford to go down. I've only got 16% lung function left. <clears throat> and I, I always keep the mask on when the doctor comes in to the room and I am so lucky that, you know, if they need to look at my throat, the doctor will put a mask on um, because they understand that I cannot risk getting sick. And, you know, although doctor's offices now do have masks at the front desk, asking anybody if you have, you know, a cough or cold or anything like that to put a mask on, you know, for the safety of not only the doctors but other patients, um, some patients don't. But see, it's unfortunate these days that doctors don't make house visits anymore. And I often wonder what on earth is going to happen when I get to the point that I can't go to a doctor's office once a month. You know, I, it's, uh, that's, that's been at the back of my mind quite a bit. We have been on an nearly an hour and we have not done one bit of exercise come on people it's time to get moving that was my thyroid tablet okay i'm gonna move you away from me a little bit so i don't smack you in the face Make sure you have some room around you so you can stretch. And we are going to work on the arms and the legs today. We're not just doing one or the other. We're incorporating both together. So, if you're stood up, this could be a little bit risky. Because you're going to need to use your balance now. <laughs> if you're stood, you can do the set separately. But... If you're sat or you're in bed like me, you can do both sets together. And this is basically, this is mainly designed for people who are, you know, stuck. Not quite mobile, mobile and don't have the coordination to be able to do something like this when they're stood up. And for those that are either in a chair or, you know, in bed most of the time or all of the time. It's important to keep your range of motion, um, to keep yourself supple, to keep your muscles moving um, because we tend to seize up and especially as we start getting up in age. So we're going to stretch both the legs and the arms. Okay, with the arms, I want you to put your arms out to the side. And hold. You've been doing your leg lifts and your arm punches. Good for you, Miss Rayner. And with your legs, I want you to have them out in front of you. Now, if you sat in the chair, you can put them out in front of you with your heel on the floor. And you're going to stretch your legs as far as you can. You're going to tighten the muscles in your legs. In your arms, just hold your arms out, but tighten the muscles in your legs as tight as you can. Bring your feet back towards your body, and then we're going to hold. And try not to tense the rest of your body up. Try not to tense your shoulders. Make sure that your shoulders are down. If you can't bring your arms up as high as this, Bring them up as high as you can. 
Yes, it's hard not to. I mean, you can you can't go without any kind of exercise. And any movement is important. Important. That is so true, Laura. Any movement that you can do. Okay, and relax. <gasps> any movement that you can do is so important. If you need to, give your muscle, your legs, your arms a little shake, a little wiggle. Give it a wiggle, 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 just to relax it out. I want to say good morning to a few people that I have a feeling might be lurking and, and not joining in the chat. And that is just fine by me. Mr. Q, good morning, honey. So good to see you. William, good morning. Norma, if you're out there, hi, sweetie. Um, Anne, contact me. Let me know that you're okay because we are thinking of you. Okay. Can we do a bed burning at the end? Of course we can, Laura. It would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Okay, and again, arms out to the side. Stretch your legs. And point your toes. Tighten the muscles in your legs. I'll keep your arms out. Leg lifts a few inches, that is good. Uh, just as much as you can do it, Miss Rayner, and as high as you can do it, Miss Rayner. Scotty, I think, is falling asleep. Scotty, come on, wakey, wakey. And relax. And if you need to, give a little shake, shake, shake. To shake it out okay we're just gonna do two sets of each okay so we're going to bring our arms up this way as high as we can and again we're going to have our legs out in front of us but this time we're going to bring our feet towards the body so we're bringing the feet this way and again, if you sat down, put your feet as far as you can in front of you and then bring your foot up. If you can keep your foot down flat, just bring your foot up this way as far as you can. And okay, and arms up, legs stretched, tense those muscles in your legs and bring your feet towards your body. And we are going to hold and, and reach those arms as high as you can to the sky. And relax. <laughs> and of course our class clown is digging, his, digging in his nose. I think he's looking for gold or digging to China. Oh, I'm sorry, Jen. Unfortunately, with COPD, a lot of bunch of issues do come together, honey. They really do. Yes, the YouTube changes are, are really a problem. It's important that we all support each other. Oh, that's okay, Jen. We don't worry about caps in this room. And again, stretch your arms up. Tighten your leg muscles and bring your feet up towards your body as much as you can. You know, rock your feet back like this. And stretch. Reach for the sky with your arms as close as you can. Look, see, it's starting to work with me. Can pull my arms a bit closer to my head now. A couple of days last week, I could only get them this far. Now I can get them this far. And relax. Old mucker reached that hard. <laughs> it's a bit windy around old mucker. <laughs> yeah, at least old mucker's. Exercising his finger, that is so true. 
Okay, so that's two of them. So we have done. <laughs> this next one, we are going to bring our arms in front of us. And then we're going to raise them up. And our legs, we are going to keep our, stretch our legs out. But our feet, we are going to turn our feet out penguin style. So, here we go. Arms in front, stretch your legs, tighten those muscles in your legs, not your arms. Because <laughs> your arms are already doing enough work by being held up. And then raise your arms up to the sky. Arms at either side of your ears, as close as you can. This is a different range of motion from the other one that we just did. And with your toes, turn them out penguin style. I mean with your feet. <laughs> you turn your toes penguin style if you can turn your feet out penguin style. And oh. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That is true. <laughs> and relax. <laughs> Old Mucca's Gluteus Maximus is getting a lot of exercise. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, Lorena, you fit in this room just fine, girl. <laughs> Okay, and shake, 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 shake. Relax out those muscles. <laughs> it stinks in here now. <laughs> oh my god. All muckers fumigating the place. <laughs> Open the windows quick. <laughs> Alright, and we're going to do one last one. Arms outstretched. Raise your arms to the sky, tighten your leg muscles, stretch your legs, and turn your feet out penguin style, and hold. Oh dear. <laughs> your old fucker is a poot. <laughs> and then relax. Alright, I'm giving yourself a little little shake, a little roll to relax out. <laughs> oh, Miss Rayner, laughing is good exercise. It really is. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, my goodness me. Heart Lorena, you are just an absolute riot. <laughs> and you and old Mucker together, oh my goodness. We're going to have to watch these two in the cl in class. We really are. we got to watch these two in class. They're going to be trouble. It is so good to see. It's so good to see everyone in the, in the room talking, and supporting each other. That is just so wonderful because that is what a community is about. Yes, old mucker, you are always in trouble. But but you'll never get chastised in this room. <laughs> that's, that's that's so true. You will never get chastised in this room. Now, talking about the gluteus maximus, you can, throughout the day, give it a little surprise by giving it a tweak. And if you tweak hard enough, you should raise up and down in your, in your, in your chair or your bed. See? Tweak, tweak. <laughs> and that will actually help firm up the gluteus maximus so you don't have that old body sag that you get with the gluteus maximus. Mm -mm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, Mucker has already surprised his Cootus Maximus. That's so true. <laughs> no, 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 Mucker, I don't like the, the thought of you being locked in a cupboard in school. That's not nice. That's so mean. Kids are terrible. Either that or the cane, and if you were lucky, you got both. Oh my gosh, oh mucker. I'm so glad you're not in school anymore, sweetie. I really am. Because that's just not right. That's just not right at all. Uh oh. It's alright, honey. It's alright. That's my old lady cat. She's hollering out to make sure she's not alone. Oh, sometimes she does that to figure out her location. She hollers out and I call out to her and then she she figures out where she is and where she's not and all that kind of stuff, so Okay, so, all of a sudden people are dropping out, oh no, and you would end up fighting with your brothers when you got home from school, oh mucker, that's not nice, man, I'm, I'm so, you're the black sheep, no, I think you were just misunderstood, honey. I really do. Ah, oh, thank you so much, Laura. I think it's so important to support each other and to, to, to help as much as we can. Um, it, it really is because, you know, Life can be very lonely. It can be very, very lonely. And um, if we can use something like this as a tool to reach other people, it's absolutely necessary to do. I mean, it's something that we need to do. It's, it's helping me. All of you are helping me. In a huge, huge way. More than you know. It's lonely in a cupboard. I bet it is on my I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh. But I know your sense of humor. And I'm so glad that you're no longer in a cupboard. Oh, mucker. Yep, exactly, Hollerita. We'll let him out. We will let him out. We will let you out to play. No, nope, we'll let you out permanently. Oh, Hollerita, you had a stray show up? I think it wasn't you that adopted the stray. I think the stray adopted you. That's absolutely wonderful because they make great, great, great pets and companions. They really do. I have three cats. Um... The old lady cat, we got her 17 years ago from the local pound. She was a little ditty bitty baby. And my two boys, they were tiny babies. I had to bottle feed them. They still had the steel gray eyes. Um, their mama was a yearling. She had 12 kittens. And these two were not the healthiest two. So she relocated the other ten and left these two in my care. And he's absolutely wonderful. He's a boy. So you can't keep him all the time. Because you don't, yeah, 
yeah, it is important to get them fixed. Um, if you can, search in your your town, to or or you know neighbor neighbor uh, surrounding neighbor surrounding towns, to see if they have a catch and and release program, which means you know they will come out, um, they will set out a you know a live trap catch the cat, take him fix the cat and then bring him back and release him back into you know his 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 territory because once the feral cat you know once the cat becomes you know establishes a territory it's important to put them back in that territory so it keeps the territory stable you know they the personalities stable in that territory I'm sorry that you don't talk to your brothers anymore, um, oh, Marker. It's it's, and I I can understand why. I really can understand why. Mm. That is true. You'll always have your own back. That is so true, oh, Marker. Oh, Miss Rayner, in Miss Rayner's area, they call it Trap Spain Release. Oh, so he's friendly. That that's that would make it a lot easier to do. Um, Laura, I have beaten the odds so many times, honey. It is, it, it, I know it, it's, it's hard and I'm not diminishing what they're going through, but Nobody has a done by date that the doctors can read. I know with some illnesses and some tests. I'm I'm sorry, honey. I'm I'm trying to stay. I'm trying to stay. Ugh. When I was in when I when I was when I crashed in two thousand December two thousand and twelve. Not so much positive, but hopeful. I guess the word is, reader. Um, when I was in when I crashed in December two thousand and twelve. I was in the local hospital here, and I don't know for how long because I don't know much about it. Um, I don't have very, very m minute memories. Minute memories of what happened, and they're very disjointed. And to me, I thought it was all within the same day that I was taken into hospital, but it seems it wasn't. It was spread out over a period of time. Now, they were, they were struggling to keep me going. They were having trouble. They didn't know. Denise, good morning, honey. It's so good to see you. I'm doing okay this morning. Um, it was really hard for they, they. There was nothing more that they could do for me at the local hospital. So they sent me. Yes, it's hard when you can't see them, Laura. It really is hard. Um, I was transferred from the local hospital to a larger hospital that had the ability to look after me. Um, they 
I do remember having a very brief conversation. I was coming, waking up, being surrounded by a sea of coats that she might make it side and that she might not make it side. And I had a, an extremely, extremely brief conversation. And they asked me if they knew where I was. Well, I knew I was in hospital, but that was all. I didn't know exactly where I was. Um, they asked me. I can't actually. They asked me. I remember telling them I had lupus. Because I remember hearing them say they couldn't understand why my lungs were so bad. And I remember saying I have lupus because even at that point it never occurred to me to mention the ceramic studio to these doctors. But I mean I was not with it. Um, I remember them asking me if I wanted to be intubated. And I said no. And the next thing I remember is I just said, help, and I was out like a light. So I guess I was either having trouble breathing again or my heart was going nuts again. I'm not sure which, but I just remember saying no to being intubated. And then I remember saying, help, and that was it. I was out like a light. Um, and that's all I can remember. And then I came round at some point being wheeled up into palliative care after being in their ICU I don't know how long. Um, I think I was in ICU for about a week and a half to two weeks, something like that. They didn't expect me to survive. They didn't expect me to make it. The doctors, the nurses were all amazed I was still alive. They were amazed I made it. And they were amazed that I had survived as long as I had with my lungs in the condition that they were in. Because I was so full of mucus at that point, I was literally drowning in it. So, with your friends being on life support, the life support might be giving them the chance to, to heal Laura. It might be giving their body chance to heal. So, remain hopeful. Because without hope, there's nothing. So we have to remain hopeful. And I'm not going to say positive because it's that's absolutely ridiculous to keep telling people you've got to be positive stay positive be positive you know if being positive works i wouldn't be in the mess i'm in today <laughs> it works to a certain extent but it's not going to always work but we have to remain hopeful and we have to remain stubborn, but stubborn in the right way. Well, praying, praying is the same as staying hopeful, Laura. It's the same as staying hopeful. Um, and it actually has been proven by science that by, by praying, um... A lot of people use, you know, some people don't use the word praying. Sending out positive, sending out good vibes, sending out those feel good vibes, sending out those we're thinking of you vibes actually does really work. It does help people. So we're all going to do that for you, Laura, for your friends, because somehow the universe knows where to send it. It knows, you know, you've asked, we're going to do it. We're going to think of them. We're going to think of them, you know, being healed, 
whatever manner that healing takes place is, the healing that takes place is, we're going to hope for the best for them. And that it's, it's now, you know, the universe will take it to where it, 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 it should go, to where it's meant to be. And I truly do believe in the universe and, 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 and the messages from the universe and things we receive from the universe. And I'll tell you for why. I used to rehab wildlife. I used to look after wildlife. I've had no training whatsoever. Um, people used to bring me baby scrolls. They would bring me eggs. They, they would bring me, you know, chicks that have been kicked out of the nest because they were the, you know, the smallest and the young, you know, and the weakest. So they got kicked out of the nest. Um, I've had moles brought to me too, voles. Um, somehow... I knew what they needed. Somehow, I knew what was needed to help. I once had a, a baby rabbit a neighbor brought to me that had no fur left on it. Its skin had, I mean, the cat had got hold of it. So, I just instinctively trimmed the edges as gently as I could. That were you know lifted off i trimmed all its fur so there would be no fur going into the open areas i used a very gentle antibacterial an antiseptic that had a a painkiller in it and and i, and I wrapped it so it was like a little mummy and I, I, I bottle fed it. And within a month, it had healed. Everything had grown back together and fur was growing back. Um, you know, of course I did, you know, dressing changes and all that kind of stuff, but Somebody asked me once, how do you know how to look after these animals? And I said, I don't know. I just know what they need. And when they would come to me, I would hold them, I would talk to them, and I would get whatever I needed from the universe to know what to do to look after them. And the funny thing is, when I started getting sick, they stopped showing up. The animals stopped coming. I miss them. But I know I don't have the ability. I don't have the strength. I don't have... have I don't have what it is in me to be able to look after them anymore. It's enough for me looking after the animals that I have at home you know the cats and my dog I mean my husband walks the dog I can't walk her anymore um, I can walk with them if they can wait half an hour for me to get everything together to get out of the door um, and then my poor hubby has to carry it all out down through two flights of steps in order to get out so but that's okay Hey, we plan walks during, except not in the winter. No when it's cold out, no, -uh, that's too much for me. But during spring, summer and fall when it's nice, we plan, you know, for going out for a walk. So, but, um, yeah. So we have to remain hopeful. And, and stubborn in the right way. So. Anyway, I am going to say good morning, guys. Good afternoon and good evening. And Scotty, I'm thoroughly enjoying my tea. Thank you, honey. 
Scotty sent me a couple of boxes of tea bags from the UK. Yes, I'm so excited. It's lovely. It's great. Every time I go get a cup of tea now, it's like, yes. Yep, the dishes are calling your name. I'm sorry, Rita. I've got a pile of dishes too in the kitchen to do. So, um, I shall get round to that a bit later today. <laughs> We we still got a cups and plate, couple of cups and a couple of plate places, couple of plates to use in the cupboard before we're 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 in dire need of washing dishes. We try and save to save to save. Yeah, you'll get there too. I hear you. <laughs> you know, in order to save water, we're trying not to run. You know, a ball of water just for a couple of cups and a couple of plates um i'd rather have a a stack and and do that way um but if i'm cooking and baking anything then i wash as i go you know i i have a a sink full of hot water i've already done the dishes that you know have been sat there waiting um they go, I, 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 what I do is I fill the, the sink with hot water, then I put the dishes in and let them soak. Once they've been sat and soaked for a while, then they get washed and put to dry. Um, and then that's when I start my cooking and what have you, because then I use the water, as long as it's not too dirty, to continue washing. And I wash and clean as I finish using something when I'm cooking and what, uh, or baking. So... Then at the end of dinner, there's none of that stuff that all needs washing. It's nice. So, anyway, guys. Oh, no, not another. One of these days, I'll have a complete yawn, and you'll all be there to witness it. Yep, you'll do the same thing too, Rita. I'm so glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> I have friends tell me I'm a bit too particular. No, I'm not. Just don't put something down in front of me because I'll swoop it away to get, you know, put by the sink to be washed or I'll wash it myself. So, anyway. You are so welcome, Laura. You're so welcome, honey. I'm going to say good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everybody. Have a wonderful day. I love you all so very much. And I appreciate every single one of you. And thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for stopping by. And thank you all for your support. Because support really is important. And it really does mean the world to me. Um, I wouldn't be here doing this. If it wasn't for all of you, I would be sat here twiddling my thumbs feeling sorry for myself and I don't like doing that so I love you be good don't get caught if you're going to be naughty have fun and remember one step at a time one breath at a time we I can do this Bye-bye. Thank you all so much. I love you.